Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. I usually associate Peter Bernstein more with a traditional approach to jazz guitar, uh, not only in terms of sound, but also because probably I know him from records with Melvin Ryan, Lonnie Smith and Lou Donaldson. And he does have a really strong sense of groove, some really solid lines. He never overplays. And I also really like the fact that he has a very sort of natural flow to the melodies that he's playing. The solo that I'm going to talk about in this video has all of that, but it's also a more modern piece. So there's also a lot of other devices in there. Uh, so some quarter arpeggios, superimposed pentatonics and other structure triads, because the solo I'm going to talk about here is his solo on Inner Urge of a Ralph Bowen album. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. This first example has Peter Bernstein working with a two note motif, really simple motif. In fact, it's only just a fourth interval and also some polyrhythms or cross rhythms. This is on the B part of Inner Urge. So Inner Urge has two parts, an A and a B. Uh, the first part is sort of a long, slow moving modal part where you have four bars for each chord. And then you have a B part where we have a lot more, actually all major seven chords moving around, not necessarily in any kind of tonal fashion. So this is really a through and through modal piece where the chords are not really related and they're just colors next to each other. So the motif is really just the fourth interval. So on the first chord, he's playing from the sharp 11, the A sharp up to the major seven. So the D sharp on E. And then this is moved up becoming seventh and third on the D flat. And again, moved up for the D major. Then a descending version of the same two notes. So F sharp to C sharp. And then on the B major seven, notice that he's really using the sharp 11 on pretty much all of these major seven chords. We have F, so the sharp 11, and then the A sharp, which is the seventh, and then the F sharp, which is anticipated on the C major, and then again up to the seventh, so still with another rhythm, but still sticking with the fourth interval. And then on the major seven, there's a phrase that's really coming out of, so that's first the third just, and then skipping down to a D sharp, so again, sharp 11, and then a run in, G sharp uh, minor pentatonic scale, which is really sort of a Lydian sound on top of A major seven. And from here we get a B flat seven, so one of the few chords in this song that's not a major seven chord. And, and that's first a quartal arpeggio from uh, A flat, starting on the top note, the G. And then an augmented triad. And then the quartal arpeggio reappears on the final chord on the G major with a leading note, so first an F sharp, and then this quartal arpeggio from G, which is giving us again G major 7 uh, sharp 11, and then another quartal arpeggio from B, and then going to the C on the, on the F sharp half diminished at the beginning of the next chorus, and then actually a shell voicing because we have C and then E and B. So that's a C major seven shell voicing on top of the F sharp half diminished, which is essentially also what's happening in this voicing here. So much for the notes, you should also notice that he's in fact playing a 3-4 meter on top of the 4-4 four, four groove. So in the first uh, fourth interval, we have first this, and then he's waiting for two quarter notes. So that's also three quarter notes in total. Then we get the next one. And then again, waiting for uh, two quarter notes, continuing, and then the reverse of this, but still sticking with playing a 3-4 on top of the 4-4. Four, four. So he's really implying another meter on top of the 4-4 four, four meter. I think it's also worth noticing that, especially this sound that he's using on the A major 7, where we have the, the pentatonic scale from a half step below, that's something that's re returning several times in this solo, as are the, the quarter arpeggios that he's using. So, uh, because that's something that 
I guess is also connected very much to the pentatonic sound, but it's something that he's using really a lot in this solo. <laughs> of this example is a much more traditional line. He does come out on the sharp 11, so the B and then up to the D, and then we get two arpeggios that are really associated with an F major 7, really basic arpeggios, uh, because first we get an A minor 7, so the arpeggio from the third, and then uh, the arpeggio of F itself, so F major 7, sliding up to the third, so the high A, and then from here it uh, continues with a pentatonic melody, so we're going back into the E minor pentatonic over F, which is sort of an F major 7 flat 5 sound actually, because in that way of playing we don't really have um, we don't really have a 5, so it becomes much more like a flat 5 than a sharp 11 really. But of course that's gonna be depending on the context of it. So um, first we get this melody, and then we get a run that to me really is like a, a tenor saxophone run. I think probably something that uh, I would associated with Michael Breaker, so... And really what's going on here is of course just using this pattern within the pentatonic scale and then the E minor triad, so an upper structure triad, and then going to the A. And actually this A is then on the next chord, which is an E flat major 7, uh, sharp 11 or flat 5. And the pentatonic scale that's associated with this is then D minor, which is also what he's using. So we get first the D, and we get this melody where we have repeated notes, quarter notes, and then uh, a, a triad. In this case, it's the F major triad on top of the E flat. So this sound going to the third of the chord, and then he repeats this motif, but moving it down. Uh, to the A, but still staying with the pentatonic scale, so... And then we get a different kind of ending to it. Moving on to the D flat, major 7, sharp 11. And here it's also, again, really C minor pentatonic. Uh, but the melody this time is coming out of, especially this quarter arpeggio, so the quarter arpeggio from G. First the E flat, and then the ascending quarter arpeggio. So we kind of get the arpeggio first, and then sort of this pentatonic melody that's really just a simple melody using the C as a sort of a pedal point, and then again the, uh, the arpeggio, and really the original motif with the arpeggio starting on the E flat, but then a different ending, and then again using the arpeggio to move up to F sharp, where he now goes to the bridge, and actually he repeats this quarter arpeggio so that it fits on the on the E major seven. I really like about this example is that Peter Bernstein is really using sort of a longer melodic sentence. So on the E flat major 7 you get first this motif, so... And then from another place in the pentatonic scale, really a simple way of moving it, but it's so effective that it's... And then using a different rhythm to just tie an end to it, so... Then moving into a similar approach on the D flat, where we get first the... and then an upbeat, and then the original motif, and then a different conclusion to it. And I think this idea of sticking with a small amount of notes and then really making a strong melody with it is really something that a lot of jazz guitar players don't do and which really sets him apart and also makes his playing so natural in terms of how the melodies flow.
The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these very specific jazz guitar and music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. <laughs>